Hey YouTube, it's Marty from the channel Budget Bug Out, and as I mentioned in other videos prior to this, it is the month of September. It is National Preparedness Month, so it is time for you to make your bug out bags, and hopefully this video will give you some ideas of what you should put in your emergency kit. So if you are interested in any of this gear, be sure to check out the links that I'm gonna be putting in the description box down below, where you can find them, find out more information, as well as purchase them. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started talking about item number one, the bag itself. So having a bug out bag means that you are potentially gonna find yourself in the great outdoors, in the elements. You might find yourself stranded on the side of a road or just leaving a bad situation, transiting from point A to point B. So having a bag that can withstand the elements is gonna be very important, uh, especially if it can repel rain or if it's rugged enough that it's gonna be able to take a, a little bit of abuse along the way, as well as versatile enough that it can kind of flex to whatever it is that you're going to need your bag to do at that time. So. Item number one is having a bag. The rest of this list is going to be listed in not in necessarily order of importance, but rather in the order that you might use these items. Item number two is going to be having a way of uh, holding water, purifying water, filtering water, because if you're stranded, even if you know help is on the way, you are still probably going to be drinking fluid and things of that nature. So I recommend that you either have water or ways of purifying or filtering it, which I have all of those in my kit, because having water is going to help you think straighter as well as just keeping you alive, of course. So you need to have water in your kits or a way of filtering water. For those of you who live in desert environments, you're probably gonna to have to put more water than someone like myself, and I have water kind of around me. I know where those water sources are. So just kind of keep that in mind that this is a baseline of what you're gonna need in your kits. This isn't a comprehensive uh, video of everything that you need in your exact situation. Item number three is going to be a power bank. I've been in situations where my car battery has died and I'm more or less stranded and I'm just using a cell phone in order to call for help, whether that be a tow truck or a friend or just letting people know where I am. You're gonna to need to have a way of keeping that cell phone charged until help arrives. So if your car battery does die, Having, uh, having that power bank could potentially be a life-saving because it isn't just about being able to survive, it's about being able to find your way out of that situation. And that is why I always make sure to have a power bank in every bug out bag that I have. The next item that I have on this list is having a first aid kit. I always make sure to put it in a very easy to find location, usually on the top of the bag in a nice red, easy to find container because if something happens and first you're walking around, you, you, you realize you're stranded and then you cut yourself, especially if it's severely, you're going to want to make sure that you have that kit easy to find really quickly because you can bleed out very quickly. So that's it, going to be instantly the most important piece of gear that you own, that first aid kit, if you find yourself stranded as well as injured. The first aid kit in this bug out bag, I actually did a video on, a video review, so I'll link that video review as well as the link for the kit where you can find it on Amazon in the description box down below. The fifth item that I put in this kit is having a compass. As, and I kind of cheated, I actually have a compass that has a signal mirror as well as a signal whistle. And honestly, in my experience, having a compass on me has literally been the most important piece of gear that I had on me in two or three different instances. Um, sometimes where I didn't have a compass on me, uh, I found myself lost in the wood for hours, and then having a compass on me in a couple other situations has meant the difference between finding my way out of a situation in a matter of minutes rather than in a matter of hours. Since those things have happened, I always have a compass in my everyday carry bags as well as in all of my survival kit and bug out bag. So it's that important. You need to have a compass as well as a map if you have one of your area, preferably a topographic map. And then of course, having land nav basic orienteering skills is also a very important thing to have especially in a bug out situation. Next up is having a way of keeping yourself sheltered. Uh, so whether that be a tarp or whether that be emergency blankets or whether it be a change of clothes or all of those things, which I have in my bag, 
I would always recommend that you guys have a way of sheltering yourself from the elements because wind, snow, rain, those can all drop your body temperature, your core temperature, which means that you are very susceptible to hypothermia in that kind of situation, which is a very common way that hikers die when they are outside and exposed to the elements because you never know when the weather could change in your location and that can happen when you least expect it and it can happen when you least want it to happen and it actually just rained here so make sure you always have a way of being able to shelter yourself from the rain item number seven is having two-way radios and the reason why i say that is because it honestly it's recommended by the red cross as well as other organizations that focus on preparedness so having two-way radios what that's going to do is allow you to separate from somebody else maybe you and a group go this way and someone else with a group and a group go this way you find your way to help or safety or whatnot and you can radio the other uh, two-way radio and communicate that you have found location or help or something to that effect and then you can coordinate help for the other uh, person or group of people. So having two-way radios is very useful because you can be in a either a dead zone or a disaster could hit and you lose your communication. So always make sure you have two-way radios on you. Item number eight is having a knife and item number nine is having fire combustion tools. You want to have knives and fire tools if you cannot find your way out of a disaster and you more or less have to hunker down. Having knives can help you process wood and I also would say having a saw is useful for that as well. So I have both of those in my kit. I have uh, a knife, a backup knife, as well as a saw. And then having items that can help start a fire. Honestly, you're going to want to have multiple ways of starting a fire just in case one or two of them fail. So I'll put all those things in your survival kits, in your bug out bags. That way you can last longer and eventually find help uh, the next day or the day after or however long it takes having fire and having a knife on you. But those are gonna be ways that you can extend your survivability when you're in a bug out situation. All right, the last item and the reason why I put this as item number 10 is because it'll probably be the last thing you reach for, which is food. Whenever something bad happens, something stressful happens, you are probably going to lose your appetite pretty quickly depending on the severity of the situation. But eventually, if help does not come, you might find yourself with a lot of free time as well as, um, you know, an appetite because you burned a lot of calories. So make sure you do have some food on you. All right, guys, so those are the 10 items that I recommend that you have in your bug out bag at a minimum. Of course, I have more than those 10 items in my bug out bag. I have wipes, I have playing cards, I have sunscreen, bug spray, a bunch of other different things in here, as well as uh, mini survival kits in here too. Multiple ways of starting fire, or purifying water, all those kind of things. So I'm not saying you only need these 10 items in your kit. I recommend that you have at least have a, at a minimum these 10 items to help increase your survivability. I use my experience from being in the Red Cross as well as being in the military and all the trainings and wisdom that I picked up along the way. So if you guys found this video helpful, if you could click the like button, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and check out those links in the description box if you wanna find out more information about any of the gear that I talked about. All right guys, remember that it pays to be prepared and God bless. of charging your phone in case that car battery does die.